Man, I love experimenting. Good morning, machine freaks. I hope you guys are enjoying your day. Today is gonna be one of those should have had a V8 moment. Oh, that kind of hurt my teeth. I started out the day, you know, driving around in the BMW. And I went about 100 feet and then the car did this. What is that? I shoot a bolt. I just can't believe that that thick of a bolt broke. Time to limp it back home. Hey, the good news is it doesn't make that noise in reverse. Following that, I saw Cody going down the gas line, so I followed him to see what he was up to. <laughs> How's it going? What are you guys working on? Put a new alternator in it. We're just ripping the track. Yeah, I, I didn't even make it halfway around. I already broke the, uh, the differential mount. Really? Yeah. Oh, your car? Yeah. So now I gotta fix that. So that's the last piece that this thing needs before you can rip it. So Cody and his uncle were fixing his vehicle, trying to get the alternator in the thing so that he could have a running tracker, I think it is. It's a Chevy with a Suzuki engine, probably one of the best combinations there is, other than the Nissan Cummins, in my opinion, where you get the Nissan, because I used to have a Nissan, and then you have a Cummins engine, which is like number one engine. Obviously, if you're a Chevy or a Ford fan, you're not going to agree with that. But I have gone to the Cummins factory and I've spoken to a couple of the engineers and they seem to say that they have a very, very good engine. I'll agree with that. I mean, I don't have an engineering degree. I did, however, try to get that education. Unfortunately, I ran into the second year of physics. I got sick of that stuff. I wanted to learn how to weld instead. So I took the credentials that I earned and then applied them to the welding degree and then ended up getting a welding degree and a math and science degree. Not an engineering degree. <laughs> So instead of learning like how strengths work and how to calculate things, I just know how to like take two pieces, weld them together, melt them together. Amazing stuff, I know. No, but seriously, it is a good trade. The United States needs it. The world needs it. There will always be demand for it. If you ever need a helper, hey, you should know that I'll be there. So as you guys know, yesterday we started the Gator Project. And you guys are very excited about the Gator Project. And I'm very excited about the Gator Project. How could you not be? We're going to slap this 1,000cc engine in that Gator. That's phenomenal. Carburetor number one is still in the bucket, obviously. It, it hasn't been on an entire day yet. I am going to let it sit for probably uh, four more hours. But I just kind of want to check it out. Wow, look at that brass piece. Holy cats. <coughs> yeah, that's good stuff. I'm sure everybody here has a routine, whether you wake up and have some toast, some eggs, some cereal, coffee, water, maybe even an unhealthy cigarette. I don't know, but since yesterday, I have a routine as well, and that is to take one carburetor apart at a time per day. First one sucked because we had to take like the entire assembly apart, but now that I'm down to each individual carburetor, it takes like two minutes. Like I said, that first carburetor has to sit in that dip for a couple more hours. I want to look at this valve cover while that's doing its thing. Check it out and check out what kind of material it is. I don't know if it's aluminum or magnesium, but we're going to figure it out. I'll try to teach you something. 
Just a matter of my love, I'm a pleasure, the key to my treasure, whatever was the weather. Day up and out with you till I die. How many times for you, I'm a try. Want you to notice the one and I know this perfect soulmate. I wanna show my best friend. She saved my life, my happy end in hard times. So now it comes down to the experimenting portion. We have a line of aluminum or magnesium, whichever it is. I personally think it's aluminum. If it's magnesium, it will light on fire. If it's aluminum, it will not burn. We also have a second test, just in case this one's like kind of fluke. Let's see what happens. Hopefully it's aluminum. It's easier to weld and it's cheaper to weld. Okay, it's just getting red hot, so I'm assuming it's aluminum. Okay, so far so good. It is aluminum, that, that's what the test says. Now for our second test. I feel like Bill Nye the Science Guy. Okay, now this test is made up of the valve cover and some apple cider vinegar. I guess this stuff like cures cancer and stuff. You ever see those uh, like ads on the sides of websites? They always, they always pitch this stuff. It smells like it could kill my taste buds. So all I'm going to do is dump a tiny little bit on some raw material here and see if it reacts to the aluminum. If it reacts to the aluminum, if it reacts to the valve cover, I can't assume that it's aluminum yet. We've only done one test. If it reacts to the material, then it's magnesium. If it does not, it's aluminum. I don't want it to react. Like I said, I want this aluminum. I knew this would happen, I can't hit it. <sighs> Yes! It is aluminum. You see how the vinegar isn't like bubbling and it's kind of just chillax in there? And that tells me that this cover is in fact aluminum. I'm glad I got my experimenting on. I'll show you the reason why I had to find out what kind of material this is. And that's because we have cracks here. A bunch of JB Weld right there which signifies that there's gonna be a crack or something there. And then some epoxy there, so there's something bad there too. So this valve cover is not in the best of shape. That's where my education comes into play. <laughs> Alright, let's see how these parts turned out. I knew there was no way I was going to get this gasket off without breaking it, so I just threw it right into this stuff. Look at what it did to it. A lot of people were interested on how good this dip actually works, so I'm excited to see what it looks like too. This is what they all look like. Now, if you saw, if you really paid attention in yesterday's video and you saw how dirty this thing was, I mean, just this arm alone, I can tell that there's a major difference in cleanliness. The brass is nice and clean. Now, it's cool that that dip didn't eat the rubber o-ring here, but it did in fact eat the seal or gasket that was at the bottom of this carburetor. And as you can see, that carburetor is pretty clean. Now, I did do my best of my ability to scratch that gasket off. I'm going to send this in the dip one more time before I put it in the ultrasonic cleaner, just to clean the rest of it up. But I mean, look at how clean this brass is. And the bowl was disgusting. I would like to send that again. And the needle isn't the cleanest, but the thing is, is the kit is gonna come with new gaskets, it's gonna come with new needles, it's gonna come with a lot of this brass stuff. But it is kinda cool to see the before dirty stuff and the after clean stuff. I put all 
all my carburetor stuff away. As you guys know, earlier this week, I told you that I was going to Street Speed 717's get together. I am heading towards that get together right now. I hope to see you there. I hope to have a good time. There should be a lot of people here. We made some progress on the GS1000 build slash Gator build. You know, we're gonna put that 1000cc engine in the Gator, which is phenomenal. So saying that, stay froggy fresh, stay super fly until tomorrow. 3D Machines out.